Hello everyone, this is TJ with Robin Hood Coins and tonight we are hunting two boxes of nickels. As I mentioned on the last hunt, we are still on a mission for a dated buffalo nickel to give to our great aunt who's 96 years old because she says she has not found a dated buffalo nickel in many decades. So we figured that would be really cool to give her the next one we found in this channel and be able to show her how we found it thanks to YouTube. Hopefully we can also find some proofs, some silver nickels, anything to add to our collection, and something really good for the Robin Hood Coins giveaway for this video. As always, to enter the giveaway, just comment on the video, and we'll use a random comment picker to pick the winner. So with that, let's get into these rolls. Oh, this is exciting. My wife is on her first roll, and she has a 1939, and I got over here before she flipped it over. She's notorious for checking it before I get here. Well, I just want to see first. I know. <laughs> Let's see what it is. If it has any mint mark, it is rare. And... Oh, man. It's a Philadelphia. But still, it's still a, 39, a 1939, 81-year-old coin. We will take it all day long. And there could be double die on the, on the reverse. So we'll have to check that into the scope. Okay. Very cool for your first roll. Yeah. The best part is that I'm also working on my first roll, and I found a semi-key date, 1948. I've already seen it because it was reverse up. It is a San Francisco. And if you look at my Rob Finds Treasure nickel mat right here, 1948S is a semi-key date. Not quite sure what the mintage is, but... I know it's a good find. So that is very cool. Two rolls in, we already have a 39 and a semi-key date. And earlier in this roll, I found a 2009. Hopefully that's a good indication it's gonna be a good box. I am working on my ninth roll and we have another oldie. This time it is a 1949 and it's got some really cool toning to it. Like some little purple, blue hues, yellow coloration. It's pretty cool. I like that coloration of this one. And looking at the Rob Finds Treasure Matte, if it's is an S, then it's another semi-key date. So let's check it out. And it's a Denver. Oh well. Still a 1949 with really cool toning. We will take it. And over the past several rolls, my wife and I have found five 50s. So that's cool. One of them's the 55 Denver, so we'll check for the D over S on that one. My wife was working on roll number 20, and she just found a 1940. It's a Philadelphia, but it is still 80 years old. We will take it. That is very cool. And over the past couple of rolls, I found this 1970 San Francisco. Nothing special about it. It's not low mintage or anything, but it's in better condition than I normally find them. And I'm fond of the uh, San Francisco mint, so that's a cool one. And my wife is... It's just another S. Oh, another one. See, they're common. Mine's better, though. We'll find here. Record this one, too. I just found that one. Oh, and she just found another 1939. Look at this. Is that a 59? No, that's a 39. What? You missed it. It's a 39. What? If this if this has a mint mark, you missed wait, it. Wait, no, wait, no, no, look. no. I'm going to see. It's a Philadelphia. Aww. But it could be the um, DDR. It could be a double die. It's a, a really rare variety. So two 1939s my wife found. Very cool. The very next roll, roll 21, and look what my wife found. This is awesome. Is the date on the back? Yeah, it's on the front. The The buffalo is on the back. Oh, so this is the back. That's the back, yep. <laughs> let's, flip, let's flip it over. Let's see what it is. Nervous. Oh, no oh, date. Oh, no date. That is no bueno. Where's the date at? Like right Down there? at the bottom. Oh, right here? Yeah. That's probably why it's hard to find the date. I know, they rub off too much. Oh man, that was exciting for a second. Hey, it's still a buffalo. It is, and it's the first buffalo we found in probably like 10 boxes. 
So I am happy, that is great. Here is that nickel that my wife just found and it does not look like that's gonna be very visible. We might be able to nickelate it. For now, we're just gonna keep on hunting. We are on roll number 28 and we have a 1947 and it was obverse up. So we get to do the reveal together. Let's see what it is. And it's a San Francisco. Look at that. That's cool. We have a 47 San Francisco. I'm working on roll number 35 and the very last coin was a 1948. It was an ender and it's a Philadelphia. That's pretty cool. And in this same roll, earlier in the roll, we had a 1958 Denver as well. I am working on roll number 40 and we have our first foreign of the box and it is a 1994 Canadian. I like the Canadian coins. The, you got the beaver on this one. That is very cool. I am on roll 43 and we have another 1939. Look at that. Hopefully this one has a mint mark. Let's see. Nope, it's a Philadelphia. But that gives us three to look for the double die reverse. That is great. And in the last couple of rolls, look at this 1959 that my wife found. I know it's not an uncommon date or anything, but it's in pretty nice shape for being a 1959. Looks like we might even be able to see a little bit of the steps. So that's pretty cool. Definitely set that one aside. All right, we are all done with box number one. Those are the discards right there. We had that dateless buffalo. We had a three 39s. We had the semi key date 1948S. That was cool. Had a couple other 40s, couple uh, AU condition type coins. Pretty good box. And now it's time to get into box number two. We are on roll number four, and my wife found the first 40s of this box, box number two. It's a 1947 Denver, but man, is it an ugly. It's got all kinds of toning going on, a little bit of corrosion on the back, but it's still a 40s. We'll take it. I'm working on roll number 15, and we have a 1946 Philadelphia. It's a Philly, but with still a 40s. That's the second 40s on the box. We are working on roll number 27, and my wife just handed me two 40s. First, it was a 1946 Philadelphia, and the next one is a 1947 Philadelphia. That is great. That makes four 40s on the board for box number two. And so far in this box, I've gotten three 2009s as well. We are working on roll number 37, and my wife just handed me two 50s coins. The first is a 57, and it's from Denver. Found a bunch of those, but the one I wanted to show you was this 1953 from San Francisco. If I remember correctly, the 53 and the 52 San Francisco are both better dates. They're not semi-key dates or key dates, but they're lower mintage than the the Philadelphia and the Denver of the same years. So that is very cool. Wow, roll 39 and my wife is on a roll. Look at this 1940 that she found. It's pretty nice. I normally do not find them like this. And I believe we can see several steps. I don't think it's full steps, obviously, but... I mean, I think that you can see the steps and that is not very common for 40s, at least the ones that I have found. So that is great. This is definitely going to upgrade either my, oops, and then here I drop it. Oh my gosh. That's definitely going to either upgrade my album or one of my little helpers albums. Here's that 1940 Philadelphia under the scope. And as you can see, you can make out portions of each of the steps, not all the way across on all the steps, but still, it's better to have this many steps than how I normally find them with no steps.
My wife is on a hot streak tonight. Roll 43 of box number two, and look what she found. That's awesome. Let's see, what is it? Okay, okay. And she didn't even peek. Oh, look, you can see part of it. 1930, is it? Yeah, that's a 30. We have a dated buffalo. Yeah, I can see it from here. This isn't even the good light. Yeah, but uh, on the actual coin, like the one looks like not as good as it does on your thing. Oh, okay. That is great, though. We did it. We did. Here is that buffalo that my wife found, and hopefully you can see that date right there. It is pretty clear. 1930. And let's go see if there's a mint mark. It does not look like a mint mark, so I believe this is a Philadelphia. But still, we found a dated buffalo. That is really cool. Man, it's been so long since we've been finding buffaloes. We found several silver nickels, which we have not found today. But it's still, we were looking for the buffalo, so that is great. And then I also found this 1946 in the past couple of rolls too. Here is a 2004 Philadelphia and it is the Louisiana purchase and I'm looking for the DDO. And there's a couple markers that I'm looking for from the Strike It Rich with Pocket Change book. There's a link down in the video description if you want that book too. But it has pictures and there's a line down the left hand side of this part of the R, which I see here. Um, then you can see it in right here. You can see it a little bit, but depending on how the shadow hits it, you can see it better, um, in other angles. There's a line down the left hand side of the U right here. There's a line down the left hand side of that U and you can see this, this split right there where, where the line up, the line comes up the middle and then shoots off. There's supposed to be a split serif here, but it looks to be damaged, but it's it's a lot thicker. It's not like the normal point. And you can see doubling all through around the backside of the S right there. But the part that I was mostly looking for was the split serifs of the 2004, because that's one of the best ways I know how to tell between doubling and or machine doubling and double die and if you look at the four that serif is split and the two that serif is split and then this is much wider that point in the star um but that that also shows in the um strike it richard pocket change book so we are all done hunting through the rolls, and man, that was an awesome hunt. We had a lot of really cool finds. We ended up with two buffaloes. We finally got that dated buffalo we were looking for our great aunt. That is really cool. And then we also had a slicked out buffalo. And then we had the semi-key date, the 1948 San Francisco right there. That was really great. And we had a foreign. We had the Canadian 1994. That was really nice. And my wife found this really nice shape 1940. It is a Philadelphia and probably pretty common, but I don't normally find them with steps like that. So we were pretty excited to see that. And then we had that 1949 with the really cool toning. Hopefully it's coming across in the video. The right hand side of the coin has that yellow toning and then blues and purples in the middle and on the left in the fields. So that was nice. And then we had nine 2009s. We had a bunch of 40s um, in addition to three 1939s. I did check all three of them for the DDR and it didn't have it. And we had the 2004 Philadelphia Louisiana purchase coin and I looked at this further after I recorded it and I am very confident that it is the DDO um, Just the the serifs being split and the markers on the um, RUS T, uh, TRUS and it just really I think that's the uh, DDO so that was awesome as well 
Pretty exciting. Well, we needed those buffaloes for our collections and we didn't find a silver nickel in this hunt, but we have had some extra silver nickels from previous hunts. So I went ahead and grabbed this 1944 Philadelphia to add to the Robin Hood coins giveaway for this video, along with a 39, a 48, and a 58. As always, to enter the giveaway, just comment on the video. We'll use a random comment picker to pick the winner. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed the hunt. It was a lot of fun. If so, smash that like button. If you like our content, hit subscribe and don't forget to ring the notification bell so you don't miss any giveaways or videos. And with that, we will see you on the next hunt.